Today on City Line, a historic race for City Hall. This year, for the first time, Boston will elect a mayor who is both a woman and ethnically diverse. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Holmes Ward. Welcome to City Line. We're just days away from finding out who voters will select to be the next mayor of Boston, Michelle Wu or Anissa Asabi George. The candidates, both Democratic city councilors, faced off in their last televised debate before the election this past Monday here in our studio. Sharman Sakedi shows us some of the biggest moments. Fireworks over the crisis at Mass and Cass. Every conversation that I have, is about taking urgent action. Because she's been stuck in conversation, she doesn't truly understand the crisis that is Mass and Cass. City Councilor Anissa Isabi George pledging to build a bridge to Long Island. Councilor Wu pushing back. We've got incredible minds. We can do a bridge hackathon and get this done. The bridge and the price tag of doing so means that we would be giving up and diverting our resources away from urgent action. Both candidates tangling over rent control. Rent control and rent stabilization push families further and further out of the city, increase rents, and create less opportunity for greater affordability. To say that giving city government the power to really push to protect residents and stabilize our rents would actually make rents go up insults the intelligence of our residents. Both say masks should not be removed in schools that are 80% vaccinated and both say they'd fire city workers for not following the vaccine mandate. I stand behind the mandate and we'll make sure that we uphold it. Yes, I'm prepared to do that. Polls show Wu with a commanding lead in this final stretch. There's a clear choice and this is a moment where we need everyone's voices to be heard. I am here to do the work. I am committed to this city, to the city's people. Both candidates also tangled over making the tea free. Councillor Wu supports it, but Councillor Asabi George says it's too expensive. The election is November 2nd. In Needham, Sharman Sakedi, WCVB News Center 5. And that leaves just two days until Election Day, after which history will have been made in the city of Boston. Joining me now with a look ahead to this milestone moment are Shirley Leung. She's the associate editor and columnist at the Boston Globe. And Joyce Ferriabo Bowling, political strategist and columnist at the Boston Herald. And from the campus of UMass Boston, Erin O'Brien, associate professor of political science at UMass. Thank you all for joining us. So, Erin, uh, I'm going to throw the first question to you over there on campus of UMass. We just just watch the highlights from the candidates last debate before the election. What did you make of it? Do you think there was a clear winner? Uh, no, I don't think there was a clear winner. I don't think any minds were changed. Um, one of the narratives of this race is that that these candidates are mirror images of one another or they're not that different. They are different. They are different on some of this big policy issues that came through. But I don't think voters learned anything new about their differences. And if it's a draw, that's a win for Michelle Wu, given how commanding her lead is in the mayoral race right now. Joyce, as we uh, just saw, they covered a number of topics, uh, rent control, COVID-19 safety measures, homelessness and making the tea free. Do you think any one of these topics will drive votes for one candidate over the other? Why or why not? And specifically, uh, voters in communities of color. Well, you know, when I watched it, I uh, took away some positives from both candidates. Um, I, I like the fact that uh, Anissa uh, says we still need to fix the Long Island Bridge, and we do. Um, I liked uh, that Michelle... Uh, supports uh, rent control because something has to happen. Um, and I, I do think that uh, Michelle has a wide edge, it seems, but it, it's not until the end, mm -hmm. until everybody casts their votes. It's been lethargic. Uh, people have told me, even the early voters, that not many people have shown up. I'm not sure why. I, I, so it's, none of these issues, in your mind, excite uh, uh, the voters enough to get them to the polls? I don't think so. All right. I, I don't think anyone. Shirley, both women are currently serving on the city council. Uh, do you see that having an impact on the efficacy of their campaign promises? They're both kind of steeped in city issues already. 
I think that makes them better mayors for it. Uh, for either candidate. They have both served on the council. They know the issues very well. Uh, Anissa Sabi George has uh, been excellent on dealing with mass and cast. Um, and, uh, and Michelle Wu has been great on uh, housing and development and for, uh, creating a free tea. I mean, think about it. We, you know, everyone thought that the tea could never be free. Uh, but we, there's a free bus line right now. Uh, in Boston. Uh, Kim Janey was able to put that in, but you've got to give Michelle Wu a lot of credit. And so I, I think they will be better mayors for their service on the city council. Mm, that free bus line from Nubian Square to Harvard Square, I think that's one of only the free bus routes at this moment, right? Yeah, I think it's Mattapan Square. Mattapan Square, Square, right. All the way through. Well, you know, I, I don't think either um, one of them, even though they've been steeped in, uh, you know, the city, I don't think any one of them, you know, convinces me that they would be a great mayor. I think they'd be a good mayor, but I don't think that, um, you know, I think time will tell. I also don't think that either one of them did anything about Mass and Cass. Mass and Cass didn't just happen in the campaign season. It's been going on for quite a while. Well before Kim Janey well, was mayor. Absolutely. Well before Walsh was uh, Thank mayor. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If anybody did something, it was Kim Janey who said, I'm going to do this, and Steve, uh, Sheriff Steve Tompkins. Um, you may not like it. You may say that, you know, you don't want uh, to use a public uh, safety lens, mm -hmm. but at least he's put something on the table, so something that should have been on the table a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see uh, when Wu or Asabi George get in the city hall, how quickly they turn around and sure. take some action on that. So uh, Professor O'Brien, overall polling has put Wu way ahead of Asabi George by a very comfortable margin, around 30 percent in at least one survey. Do you think we're going to see that big of a gap in support? Uh, uh, on Tuesday. Karen, I'm not Vegas, <laughs> um, but <laughs> I, I understand your question. You know, going into this, I really felt that that uh, Michelle was going to win, but I have been questioning whether it's going to be by 20 or 30, um, because, you know, that would be such a change for Boston and the places where Asabi George is drawing the majority of her support are old school Dorchester, Southie, and all that that conjures forth. Um, but I do think in recent weeks, as people have heard about this polling and uh, the endorsements that have come in have just all gone Wu's way. Um, I thought Asabi George would have a good turnout effort and a turnout amongst constituents who don't want to see major change in the mayoral's race. But I think that it's become a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I'm very interested to see. I think a lot of Asabi George's people are going to stay home. So, so um, Professor O'Brien... At 20. Professor O'Brien, you noted that Wu has stacked up a lot of endorsements. Do you think the endorsements really make a difference? They're good for press releases from Michelle Wu's yep. camp, but do you think they'll actually turn into uh, 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 feet to the polls? All the books behind me would say endorsements don't matter. <laughs> but on this race, I do think they actually do because of that momentum to get every major person from Boston, you know, uh, and outside Elizabeth Warren, Markey, Ayanna Presley. I think it's the momentum, the wave, the, if it was just one of those endorsements, no. The wave of endorsements, yes, I think they do have impact. Well, we have people here from the Globe and the Herald, and uh, the Globe uh, has in, uh, endorsed Andrea Campbell in the primary, and you've endorsed uh, Wu for the final. What do you think about that, Shirley? Well, you know, people have also written about how newspaper endorsements don't matter <laughs> as much anymore as well, especially since Wu is so, um, has such a big lead. And so, um, but, you know, I really worry about, I, I'm not sure about voter turnout. I don't know if it needs, I, I mean, I, I can see it going either way. Uh, I can see Michelle Wu's supporters staying home because her lead is so high and that um, it's, it's, she's so ahead in the polls and they don't need to be there. And I think I can see a Nisa Sabi George voters saying, you know what, we're going to go out. We're going to make a go of it. I mean, Boston loves uh, getting behind an underdog. And so I think it will all it will be all about the turnout and who's able to 
to tell, and, and it's a good thing the weather's good so far on Tuesday, and so Mich Michelle is built in a very impressive machine. Um, so let's see, let's let's hope that her voters can come out, but who knows? Shirley, let me ask you this question before we go to break. Voter turnout was very low for the primary. Um, do you see this race between two ethnically diverse women incentivizing voters, especially voters of color, to come out? You know, I was very disappointed in the primary. I thought um, the, the slate of candidates, uh, all people of color, were incredibly impressive. And that should have sent a lot of, uh, you know, communities of color to the polls, and, and it didn't. So I don't know if community colors, communities of color are energized for the finals either. And we're going to talk about that a little more in our next segment. Coming up, a look back at the primary and what those election results may indicate about Tuesday's contest. Stay with us.